Ball me, drip it on bread. I'm trying to love you like a gangster. Gangster, gangster. Baby, would you answer? And today I'm going to be going through my GCSE art sketchbooks. So I know this video is kind of overdue because the last video I did was like six months ago. Um, and I didn't really know if I was on the YouTube wave because I didn't think anyone would watch it. But people watched it and they liked it. So thought well, I'd carry on in it. But <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to go through all the artwork I did for GCSE. All together, I did three sketchbooks three final pieces um, including like my actual like GCSC final piece and I did two of my sketchbooks in year 10 and then one in year 11. So what happened is I didn't realise that this video was going to be so long when I was recording it so I decided that I'll split it into two parts so part one is just the first two books and then part two is going to be my third book and i'll have a link in the description box for part two so you guys can watch that so to start with the year 10 ones this is my first sketchbook and our theme was society so you'll see like the same sort of concept for the first few pages in each book so it starts off with like my title page and then moves on to the mind map and then some images. So for this one, I did a very detailed mind map, lots of colors and like little images. Um, you don't necessarily have to spend that much time on the mind map, but I just felt like doing it. And then this is just a page of like a few images that I thought linked to society. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't do this page until like after I did my final piece. I just found taking pictures was so annoying and like so hard. So I just took pictures as I went along like for each page, which you'll see. Um, so I saw just at the end, I've got a whole bunch of different pictures of like my friends and that. And then explained it and was like, yeah, this is society. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be honest. And then this was a, my first page of studies um you can tell this is a year 10 book because a lot of this like doesn't link at all but it's all right i've got a mixture of different media so here you can see there's pencil this is pastel pastel pencil that was gel pen and that was watercolor pencil and then all of this was a watercolor pencil and this was normal graphite pencil so what i was trying to do here is mix like nature with people um i never really followed up on it because it just it just didn't feel like doing it anymore um, i've got like my explanations around it explaining like my thought process and stuff um and yeah um obviously include the pictures that I used for a reference so i've got them in both black and white and color um which was obviously useful for doing the graphite and then colored so yeah so the next page was about cubism and this is what our teacher gave to us to um study so the two artists we looked at were picasso and dave murray it basically just included like a little bit of background about them some of their work and then we had to do a response to it this was my picasso response um this was my dave murray response here and for this one i used watercolor pencil and for the dave murray one i used these like special skin tone pencils i can't remember what they're called but i think i'll probably do a video on like the supplies i used for gcse art um but for this one i used watercolor pencil you can see And then this, it was just like the explanation that I did on like a piece of um, like acetate. I didn't really have any other space to explain it. So I did it on that. So this was the response that I did to cubism. I did it in Dave Murray style. Like you can see with like the polygons and stuff. So we had to get a picture of someone um, I used myself and um, like cut it up and put it in the like stick it back together and put it in the start of cubism 
Um, and so yeah, I did that with the image and then I like sketched it. So this one I used the same pencils from um, this response here. And then um, this one I used watercolor pencil. And then for the rest of the page, it's just like I've got my explanations on some tracing paper. And then I've just got swatches like pain and the pencil shades um and this like kind of stuff just adds character to the book and just makes it more interesting so my next page was about artists who were inspired by society so i looked at four and i looked at ewing paddock david hockney sorry this is kind of hard to hold <laughs> andy warhol and banksy um and yeah it's kind of hard to hold because i did this like i added um paper at the end to like extend the page because there was like extra stuff i wanted to put on it and i didn't have enough space so that's why i'm kind of like wobbling but um yeah as you can see like i've put their work explained like how it links to society how my response to theirs links to society um and sort of just done it in like the same style you can really tell this is a year 10 book because it's just all over the place um so the next artist we looked at was tom phillips um and we looked at his book called a Humument. and what he did is he took pages of like this book and he painted every single one and the way he would paint it is he would paint over like the majority of the words but leave out the ones that he wanted to use to make a sentence so i thought that was really cool um and obviously i got some of my responses here and i've included like some of his work so i did it in like little booklets to make them look like the book um it was really fiddly the way i did that is i just used i just printed them out and then um i just used sell, like sellotape to at the side and then obviously stick it down at the bottom so this was the before page and then this was the first edition and then this was the second edition because he did it um twice i think and yeah i explained like why i liked his work how it looked to society and um how my responses sort of in with it so my next page was another artist and uh we were looking at grace and perry and i really liked his work because it was really colorful like you can see by like my responses um how colorful it was but he did uh tapestries um even though i didn't do a tapestry response i still try to incorporate his style into like the media i was using um so here i've just got some backgrounds on him and then I've got my responses on this page. So um, this was like a portrait I did. And then this was an image I took. Here's another one. And then this was the painting I did based on this image. And as you can see, like I've changed the colors to sort of match um, Grace and Perry's style. And then, yeah, I've got like another explanation here um, because I did run out of space. And then again, I've got like paint swatches just to make it look cute. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, I forgot to show you guys this one. Yeah, there we go. The next thing we did was compare Grace and Perry and Tom Phillips. Um, so yeah, this page is just writing, to be honest. It's sort of like an essay. But... Um, yeah, I've just like got their work as well, just to add to the page and make it less writing -y. Less of the page being just writing. Um, and just to make it a bit more visual. But obviously with GCSE art, like the writing is just as important as the artwork. So here I've done a page on my school's visit to the tape. So yeah, I've just got some pictures about what I saw, like my favourite piece here, um, how they all link to society. And yeah, art gallery visits are really good um, for your book. They really show how interested you are. So here 
is the beginning of my focus into society so as you can see i did materialism at first i was gonna do um social class but i wasn't too sure how to make it work so i did materialism instead i just did everything to do with like materialistic items um like money like being affluent to go with this i did a mood board and this is what i did to show like materialism so i found a lot of these images on like pinterest because pinterest is really good for like giving you um similar images so these were taken using my camera um i basically took it like really blurred and it was basically just jewelry but it was nice to use it as like the background sort of thing um and then these images were found on pinterest um so i've just got pictures of, like shoes um brands money um this is a picture of myself and then what i did was i printed out some diamonds and like put them like they were teardrops to really show the materialistic side of myself <laughs> yeah and i've just got like a bunch of slogans like need money for gucci that's a mood um happiness is expensive um i've got swatches i even put the price of giuseppe's <sighs> this and this was from the carrier bags you know the carrier bags you get from nike town i just cut out the nike tick and put it on there so yeah that's what i did for my mood board if you're wondering what i used to make it i got this like faux board from ryman's can't remember how much i paid for it but it was probably like two three pounds and i also got this silver like glitter paper from ryman as well um and i just stuck it over the foam board and then we put the pictures on top oh and then these um i like those suitcase tags and I just thought they were cute to add. Like I tied these ones together. Um, just to add character and stuff. So this was my first study. I did it of like these stones. Like my mom had this necklace and I really liked it. Wait, let me show you the picture. Yeah, so that was the picture of them. And I tried to do like good studies but i just i'm just not really, really liking them and um, this one was in pencil and this one was watercolor pencil um i don't really like this one that much um but i thought the pencil one was okay but obviously not my best work um but yeah that was my first study the next we had to do clay work like this was when our teacher wanted us to experiment with different media so we did clay so i made two iphones i made an iphone 5s and i made an iphone 6 so i've got them here actually so <laughs> these are the iphones i made obviously they're not perfect they are a bit you know then and they're not like the straightest piece of clay work however i think i did a pretty good job um this one i did it of the snapchat like login page this was the old one it doesn't look like this anymore and then this was my um iphone 6 at the time um this was like my lock screen i had like this satin background um you guys can probably see like this line through it this is why I had to glue it back together because someone decided to break it. Like, I wanted to cry. I really wanted to cry, but I held it in and I fixed it. And I put, like, I had to use, like, glue. And then, um, I think, I, I don't know if I put extra clay on top, but I used glue. And then I think I used, like, tissue paper or something like that. And then I had to sand it down and then paint over it. It was just stress. Like, it was actually stress. Like, if you not do clay work, make sure you, like, put it away or, like, lock it in a cupboard because people are out here being mean for no reason anyways i did the 
like right up for it and it was basically just how i did it um so i did it in like an instruction like step by step sort of format and then down here i did the explanation and then obviously i've got some pictures of me in action so the next media we did was lino printing um the lino print that i did it was of money so you know at the time i was going on a france trip so i had a whole bunch of euros and i just took a picture of them and used it for my art project um and then i did a lino print personally i don't really like lino printing that much but lino printing is pretty cool like it's a pretty cool skill to have but yeah here i just explained like how i did the lino print and why it links to society oh, okay. so here we were just practicing like marks and um like different ways to add like texture and um shading to your work so here we did it with pen and this was really cool actually because um typically like you'd think of just like shading with pencil and stuff but for example like cross hatching like that's actually really cool and then this that fell out was me trying to practice it don't look at this because it just wasn't nice <laughs> but um the rest of it was um where i used like cross hatching i also used what's the other one called okay i didn't write it down but um it's like circles that sort of thing and then this one was with paint so i did like a couple flowers um this one was where you like flick it and it makes the paint drops um and this one i tried to use um a white oil pastel and then put the watercolor on top but it just didn't work out that well but the examiner saw what i was trying to do also you see how this is happening this happened to me in every book and it just happens when like the pages like the book just gets really full and it's so annoying because i've put sellotape on it so many times and it just doesn't want to comply but it's okay so after that i made it to my final piece so i'll insert a picture of the final piece because i don't have it on me it's still at school this is my plan so to make this i used photoshop on the computer um here i was trying to practice how i was going to do like the diamonds um and then practicing the outline this is a draft of um what i was gonna do for my final piece and then obviously call the explanation there so then this is what it turned out like this is just a picture of it but as you can see like i did a portrait um and then like my eyes were diamonds and then i was crying diamonds um and this was just to show like materialism and how it affects you on like the inside and um i was trying to be deep so this is me trying to explain it and then i've got a few up close pictures and then that was the end of the book so i know a lot of people wonder whether you can have empty pages and to be honest empty pages are okay as long as they're not in between because then it just looks weird like if it was in between if i had an empty page here it just look a bit weird um but after you've done a, your evaluation, like there's no need to go into those pages again. So that was book one. So this is my second book, which I started in year 10. What is that? Oh, this is, oh, I ripped it off. This was like my Canada number and stuff. GCSE days. So we did a part and together. So I didn't actually do, I didn't actually do a cover page. Um, like an intro page for this one i just went straight into the um my map so this my map i didn't spend as much time as the, the other one but i still did try my best to make it look nice and 
inviting so the examiner would continue so my first page was an artist study it was an artist called willem kauf i basically just took a picture in his style and then painted it so what he did was showcase like different objects including like really expensive ones um so here like i think this is a vase i think and um then he's got like food around it like he did he used a lot of oranges which i kind of liked like the half peeled orange look um so for me i used a pepper a bunch of bananas a jug and a glass and then i took a picture of that this is a picture of my a3 study it was an a3 um, pencil study and then this was um a small painting that i did um so this was the study that i did in pencil so that's that and then next I took photos a bit more serious this time so these are some pictures of like my family and um it's just some things like i had in my house so this was a page that i added in um it wasn't actually in my book i used like it, it was sort of like card it's like that annoying like it's not card but it's not paper but it's like shiny so you can't actually draw on it um but i just used that and then i got a whole bunch of pictures out of, like magazines so i think i use vogue um because like here's like versace and stuff um i think i did use vogue and i just used like other magazines as well and um made it into like a collage so i laid it down before i stuck it just to work out composition um and then i just used that as like a part and together so these were artists that were inspired by a part and together um so you've just got a few there i've got pictures of like their work and then i've just got their name on it to give them credits yeah and then these were my studies so this was the first study i did um i did this image okay why is it not coming up oh yeah re i realized i stuck it down yeah i made it into like a, um, a flap and i've got the image here and then like the close-ups so i focused in on the strawberry on the perfume bottle on the pot of um no not pot it was it was actually a shot glass and i put pens in it um don't ask why but I just thought it looked cool so yeah that's what i did for this study and obviously i used different media so i did acrylic paint i think this was watercolor pencil yeah um and then graphite and then pen and then what happened here is i used oil pastels and then one day i was working and my pva glue like i knocked it over and it spilled but it went over this bit and then obviously it dries clear so it just made this like clear layer which was kind of convenient because the the annoying thing of oil pastel is sometimes it will um like rub off on the other side of the page like it would rub off on this bit here so the pva glue kind of acted like a little barrier which was kind of cool so so the next page i looked at another artist i looked at michael craig martin um because i really liked his his artwork um like the colors and stuff i did a graphic piece um so i did this using adobe and then this i also did using adobe um if you don't know me you know i do like graphic design a lot more now so i don't mean to shy it out in it but you lot should follow my page on insta I just realized this is meant to be on the other page. It's meant to be on this page here. Her like a part together was she got a whole bunch of like the same items, put them together and took a picture. So 
for this one she used like records shoes and then light bulbs so i did the light bulb one um but instead of just doing light bulbs i added keys and um bottle tops and i just put those together and made my own piece of that so i can show you guys so this is what i did and um if you can tell i kind of mixed michael craig martin's style with lisa milroy's style so i used like her composition but then i did um michael craig's martin michael craig martin's color scheme and that's how i did that piece so yeah this i did just did a few studies like i got the picture of the bulb did a few sketches and then i moved on so my next page we had to look at a specific color so i chose blue um so we had to put together like a whole bunch of items that were the same color and yeah i did i took a picture and then i did a painting of it so you got some chewing gum a bracelet some paint brushes then little those post-it thingies that you put in books like your textbook and then a key ring some nail polish and that was it no a whiteboard pen whiteboard pen so yeah i just explained like how it linked to society and then society i mean apart and together sorry i'm thinking of my other book so the next thing we had to do was our statement of intent and this was where we had to explain what we were gonna focus on in the project so i did that there and then this page is another page that i stuck in um because i went to a gallery and um i like forgot to leave a space for it um so obviously it fit like here the most because i wasn't doing like a specific you know, artist write up or anything because if i tried to put it there it would have looked weird um so i put it here and i visited visited a gallery called the white cube and looked at the exhibitions there and then i moved on to my focus so i did um vanitas and vanitas is basically this like style of art where it includes death and life so you'd have nice objects and then you would have something that represents death or like ending of like time. Um, so it was mainly skulls, but you could also have like decaying flowers or like a, a timer, like a watch. Um, and I thought that was really cool. So I just I just brought together a whole bunch of artists who did that style. Audrey Flack, David Dehim, and then a couple more there as well so i just got their pictures all together um and it's a mixture of photography and painting oh yeah picasso as well did vanitas i started off by collecting some images so i took these pictures myself at this time it was like halloween and they were selling skulls in asda I picked one up and I was like, this is helpful. Um, so I got my skull from Asda for like three pounds and um, I bought some flowers and just put it together with other things that I already had in the house. Like my mom had this really nice um, globe and then I just got a perfume bottle and started taking pictures of that, like in the Vanity style. And then after doing that, I did some studies. So I did a graphite pencil one and then I did an oil paint one. So this is my first time using oil paint. I think I did pretty well for my first time. It was really small and like manageable. Um, but yeah, that's when I really started getting into oil paint. And then obviously I've got like the explanations. You always want to say like how it links to your project, why you've done it, um, because that's what the examiner wants to see. Because they don't want to be going through it and not know what, why you've done what you've done. So then I got more images. So I just took a pictures of like a whole bunch of decaying things. Um, and then obviously nice things like these flowers. But then I've got like a dried, dried up piece of um, pepper. 
like these are like the seeds and then this was dried orange peel dried flowers this was a lime that was going moldy um and then obviously my skull my not my skull the skull i bought from um asda and then um this is ginger and then obviously i'm explaining you know in the writing like how my pictures link to the theme and like you have to bring it back out to um like the overall theme so even though i'm doing vanitas like i still have to link it to a part together as well because you don't want to stray away from that so then i did more studies and i did a mixture of paint and graphite pencil so this was mixed media and um the only thing that's in color and in paint are the flowers and i try to do that to like emphasize the difference between the living things and like the inanimate objects um so yeah i've just got two studies here to sort of add to the page and like make sure there's less blank space i did um experiment with like background color a couple of studies with um different colored backgrounds so i did a black one and i did a light brown one i didn't like the light brown one i just felt it looked a bit patchy because i did use um i used oil paint for the flower but then i used acrylic for the background and because i didn't mix enough paint i had to keep mixing it and then obviously when you do that the shade is a bit different so it just came out really patchy which was annoying but then this one was all acrylic paint this took me forever though it took me a couple of weeks in terms of working hours i can't remember exactly but um i think this was one of my most realistic paintings like i show this to some people and they don't believe it's a painting but it is i'm very proud of it so yeah that was the experiment i did with backgrounds and obviously i came to the conclusion that i liked the black background more like i knew i liked it more anyways but you just have to um, spell it out for the examiner and just show them that you're trying different things, even if you know already. Like, you just have to do it anyways. So then, I looked at Audrey Flat. Her painting style was just goals. It was so realistic. And I just looked at it and I was like, how? Like, honestly, how? So I tried my best to copy it. I think I did all right. Can't lie. Like, I did... um. I think they're tomatoes. No. Well, they might be cherries. Do you know what? I don't know. But I copied it from this painting. And then I copied this from this painting down here. This is a flower, I think, um, from this section. And then um, I've just got a bit of background on her over there. Explanations over here. And yeah. There you go. So next, um, I looked at textures. So this is when I most mainly looked at like the dried foods and flowers. Um, so yeah, I've just done like a couple of paintings. This I used um, coloring pencil and this I used coloring pencil as well. So the two at the top I used coloring pencil and then this one was acrylic and this one was acrylic. Um, so yeah, I've just got the explanations around it, um, why I did that, and how it links to my theme. So then, I made it to my final piece plan, and I did a oil painting for this. I don't have it with me, because um, I did leave it at school, but there's a picture of it down there. I think there's another, there's a bigger picture. Yeah, there's a bigger picture on this page. Yeah, I just included um, the materials I was gonna use, um, some swatches from like the actual painting and then some up close images. So this was the image. This was the image here that I was painting from. And I took that image. I took it the day of the exam, like not my real GCSE exam, but the day of like um, that art exam. I've just explained all of that and obviously did my final piece. It took me so long. 
like i'm really happy i didn't do that for my actual gcse final piece it was like before christmas i had to finish it but it took me so long like in terms of working hours i think it took me like 30 to 40 hours so obviously i just got my explanation i have to talk about had to talk about why what i could do to improve it um obviously i've got like the black background the half peeled orange um the skull because that's important for vanitas i somehow managed to include a picture of myself in every final piece so i decided so for my year 11 one i didn't do myself um like for that specific reason but obviously this is a picture of me in a frame <laughs> um yeah so that was my final piece and then obviously these pages are empty oh yeah this was a flap i made to keep all of these pages all of these um pieces so i would just put them in like that hold on let me show you guys just slot them in and then boom it was like a pocket and then i would just know that the examiner would have all of the pictures to look at in there